Good evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you may be in this wonderful world. And welcome to another Photo Creative live feedback session. Photo Creative, what is that? I set a challenge each month to a wonderful group of photographers we have over in a Facebook group. And then they go and put all their effort into practicing their photography with that challenge. We are meeting here to have a live feedback session. If you would like to come and join that group, please see the link in the description below. Come and find out all about it. Hello, everybody. It's really great to see you again back here in cold England. I've been running photo workshops in Morocco and Spain over the last month, and boy, am I feeling the chill today. And I don't feel that great, to be honest. I've had a bug for the last week or so, but hey, never mind. The show must go on. <coughs> Excuse me, there may be a bit of coughing and a bit of sniffling and I've got a tissue here just in case. Now if you get value and want to support the Photo Creative Group, which will help you grow your photography skills, then you can buy a sticker such as Don Johansson did earlier. Thank you, Don. Or you can set up a small regular donation from the page using the link in that description. It's not expected, but it is appreciated to help cover costs. I especially want to welcome our new members. Now don't be shy guys, these challenges are an opportunity to give your skills a real workout. That is what they are for. It is practice for you because photography is a little bit of knowledge and a lot of practice. These challenges can help. But if you really want to take your photography to a whole other level, of course I've got online courses, but photo workshops are where it really happens, as I mentioned a moment ago. I've just come back from running workshops in Morocco and Spain. I just want to share a few pictures with you because we had an absolutely fantastic time in Morocco, which was a travel photography workshop. And we're trying to say a little bit about where we are. Now, many of these are little triptychs of three, but I'm not going to go deep diving into that, but I would just like to show you just a few of the amazing pictures from Morocco at uh, Jamel Al Fanar in the marketplace here, where we go on the first evening. Um, you know, trying to capture a feeling, the spirit of the place, it's busy, it's bustling, and what amazes me is by the morning, all of this has gone. We had a little walk around in, in the marketplace there. Um, and things to watch for, uh, things such as this, you know, you see some great light and look at those colours and then maybe just wait a while until someone with that colour steps into it. Something complimentary, something that works. Now, of course, I would love it if this woman was coming the other way, but I still find it works with her back view. The important thing here, I think, was separating the subject from the background by being very careful with aperture and where we focus, but also look at that gorgeous light going on behind her. I must have waited there for quite some time. You have to wait sometimes because many people came through there, but then someone was overlapping someone else, and, and this is all part of being able to separate your subject from the background. Within these challenges, it's not just about fulfilling the brief. It's also about taking a great photograph, something interesting. Light plays a huge part. I've just realised I didn't show you the picture I was talking about. Sorry, I told you I'm not feeling too good. I've got a banging headache. Waiting for the light in the marketplace and this, this lady, but the colours are complementary. It's very much all one colour. And by separating her out, we got her to stand out from the shot. Light is always important and watching for some great light wherever you may be. You don't have to be in exotic locations such as an old tumble down ruined Casbah in Morocco. But looking for light helps. Look at this gorgeous evening light that's just sort of wrapping itself around the corner of these ruins as the sun was starting to set off to the right. Sunset. We all have a sunset, right? But also I kind of like a bit of haze going on. This is a place called the Monkey Fingers. It's in the Dardas Valley. And you've got those wonderful rounded rocks. Now further up the valley, they're all tumbling down the side of a cliff. Now, a couple of very experienced photographers are on the workshop. They were more interested in that. I and some of the others were more interested in this hazy view off up the valley. And it's one of the valuable things when you come on a workshop 
that you get to dedicate time, uninterrupted time, to really take your photography on to a whole new level to make sure that you're really getting in the practice as well as having a great experience of course with like-minded people this lady is called Aisha she's a nomad living in a cave on the side of a gorge with her husband and two children we spent a bit of time visiting her which was absolutely wonderful magical experience these people are so great. And if you ever get an opportunity to do something like this, make sure you give something back, you know. We took a load of non-perishables such as sugar, flour, oil, shampoo, soap, things like that, so that we can give a little bit back to them for inviting us into their home and letting us document and photograph their lives. She made us the most wonderful spiced bread which she served with the most wonderful tea as well it was probably the best tea I've tasted in the whole of Morocco and there it is in a cave on the side of a gorge here's the guys going out into the desert into the sand dunes ready to capture the sunset um, we stayed in the most wonderful encampment beautiful beautiful glamping in the desert what more can I say um, and here it is, the sunset that we saw a little bit later that evening. But also, when you go somewhere, don't get lost just in the sunset. Think about other things that are going on. Something which fascinated me with the little animal tracks going on in the sand and using that wonderful sunsetty light to bring out the textures. Here where a lizard has scampered past through the ripples in the sand. Also, I got to have my very first go at a bit of astrophotography. Never tried it before. Someone in the group was kind of into it. So, well, hey, let's share the love around. And I'm really kind of pleased with that. Yeah, there's a bit of light pollution on the horizon, but hey. And this is another thing. You don't necessarily need special equipment for photography. My little old X-T2 that I use all the time with my bog standard 18 to 55 mil lens. All those pictures were taken on that with that lens. You don't really need specialist equipment to do these things. So I hope you don't mind me just indulging you there because I just wanted to go through some shots because the thing to remember when you're doing these challenges, of course, is that you need to be looking for the light and the right moment and the composition whilst still fulfilling the brief the challenge and our challenge this time of course was best friends not an easy challenge and it was quite interesting to notice that we didn't actually have as many entries as i would have expected for this one i can never second guess you guys but we did get some really really great uh photography going on there so let me just get my screen set up and ready and let's dive on in and go take a look at some of them right here we go i think i'm about ready for this one here we go let's share the screen i just need to move some things around so i can see your comments here we go <clears throat> now of course there were lots of man's best friend of course sal Schaff. I totally get that you fulfilled the brief here. Yes, best friends, they're kind of going on. But is it a particularly powerful picture? My coaching to you would be, I'm guessing you did it as a selfie with the phone. Well, good on you for entering and giving it a go. Personally, I just find it a little bit disconcerting where you've, the face is cut off. I'm assuming it's your face. Um, I just think it'd be better to see your face, to try and see some interaction between you, if it is you, and of course, the dog. It's a quick phone snap, but also think about light. So we've got a bit of snuggliness with the blanket, but the light isn't great, and I just think cutting your face in half didn't really work as a picture. But hey, good on you for entering, and hopefully these bits of feedback may help you. Good point, Jules. Yes, you actually entered after the deadline. 
So there you go. Told you I'm not firing on all cylinders at the moment, but nonetheless, there we go. Jamie Smith, <laughs> how are you, my friend? Always good to see you on events and workshops and photo walks and stuff. And I kind of like your abstract. You are a very accomplished photographer. No question about that. Yellow and blue, they're best friends. And that was something I've seen repeated throughout this challenge is so many of you guys have, have taken complementary colours and brought them together. Um, and I like the shapes and patterns you've got here, Jamie. It's not a shot I would necessarily automatically associate with you. So again, good on you for sort of doing something a bit different. It's always worth our while to do something a bit different, something a bit out of our comfort zone. I mentioned that I had my first go at doing a bit of astrophotography. Well, you know, I'm the instructor. I'm supposed to be the clever one here, and I'm having one of the students show me about astrophotography. And it was a great experience. We are all experts and students all the time. I'm hopefully going to be doing a video for YouTube before too long with um, Tom Oswald from Clickersnap, who is seriously into his astrophotography and going over to see him on Saturday to have a chat about it and have a look at what he uses his rig and we will film something um, to do with that later. Forgive me if I'm going a bit quick, guys. I really don't feel great. Hubert Steve Cole, best friends. Totally get it. But the thing is, what I was saying earlier, remember to try and make the photograph as powerful as it can be, rather than just take, you know, a snap. It's a nice snap. I love um, what's going on in the middle here, Dad Mike with twin sons. Um, I like Dad, I love his expression there. Um, I think what's letting you down here is light. Light is king. Um, how could we improve that light? I don't know. It looks to me like it was just taken under living room light in the evening, which is okay. But I think if you'd managed to sort of do something like this, maybe using the light from a window, so the light's washing in from the side a little bit more, possibly lining yourself up more to the right so that these uprights of the blinds behind were more sort of vertical. Also, if it was during daylight, you could probably use some light coming through those to backlight a little bit. It would have put a slight rim light around your subjects. It's a nice, happy snapshot of some best friends. I totally get it. Does it stand as an image in its own right? Mm, not quite so sure. But good on you, Hubert. Good on you, my friend. You gave it a go because this is the most important thing. Giving it a go. Um, you know, we're all in different places on our photographic journey and uh, we all have to give it a go. My first attempt at astrophotography wasn't the most exciting shot and I want to do a bit more because I thought it was kind of fun and hopefully it will improve. And that is what these challenges are all about. Have a quick look at this one as well, because I think it's a really well taken picture from Barry Small. We were just talking about light. There's some really great light going on here. Um, excuse me. <coughs> ah. um, there is some really nice light. Look at the qualities of them. We've got these subtle sort of shadows and shade using the curtain in the background. It's just keeping the background nice and simple. And I like the way you have used a shallow depth of field. That's a wide aperture to sort of concentrate onto um, Stan and letting Ollie go a little bit soft. You put a lot of work into this. Many of you put a lot of work into these images. You always do. We're just seeing, you know, the way Ollie is sort of eyeing Stan from the background and Stan's looking off. It, you've actually captured their characters, I think, really rather well. Um, but hey, it's a good effort and I like it because you have, of course, fulfilled that brief of best friends. There's some crazy ideas going on in here as well. Martin Smart, camera to printer, they're best friends. I get it, my friend, I get it. Um, and I can see again, you kind of put quite a lot of work into your thinking about this shot, Martin. You know, we've got the camera, we've got the subject that you have just photographed, we've got the print coming out here. Um, 
Forgive me, my coaching to you is it's a little bit messy. How could we have tidied this up a bit? I'm not sure. Um, you see, I do like the concept a lot. I like the, your little pyramid of polo mints or whatever they are. Um, but somehow it's just a little bit too busy and a little bit too messy. Uh, there's something going on under the table here as well. There's, there's lots of all these wires and stuff. I'm just wondering, could it have been sort of cropped in a little bit if we took off the top of the printer, this area up here, which is just kind of distracting and just kept it a little cleaner. You know, we only need to see this little part of the printer with the print and your stack of polo mints. I like the way you've lit the camera, that highlight coming down the side. You've obviously thought about this quite hard, but I think maybe if you pull the elements together a bit more, maybe there's something I can hide the top with. I'm gonna use my scruffy old phone. If we take off the top and maybe take a bit out from the right side, try this for yourselves, guys. Just try cropping a bit off the top and take out, I think it's a mouse to the right, and just the back of the camera. I think it improves it because you've got some great light going on. What do you think? Just pop it into the comments. If you take the printer off just above the display screen and take pretty much everything to the right, this mat down here, and just take that off the other way. Personally, I think it improves it a bit. I think the picture's in here. What do you think, guys? What do you think? Yeah, it works a bit better cropped. Good, you don't have to agree with me, by the way. <laughs> it's always really important to pay attention to these things. Good on you, Martin. <clears throat> I hope that helped. Let's just move up a little. Linda O'Neill, hello, Linda. One of our stalwarts. <laughs> there is a lot of fun and happiness going on in here. And I like the colours, the autumnal colours going on. Is this you um, in, in Our Lady here, which is all kind of working quite well. For me, I think it could possibly be improved if you caught the moment when these two people are closer together. I'm being harsh on you, I know. But it's almost like they're adversarial because they're on opposite sides of the frame and facing each other. Whereas I feel had they been closer together and were sort of shaking leaves out and laughing with each other, sort of shoulder to shoulder, you'd possibly have that best friends feel a little stronger. Not you, Linda. Okay, that's cool. Um, as Wendy just said, it is a fun shot. I totally get it. And I like the use of colour. And I really like your idea. I just feel within the image, if they were closer, you'd have that best friends feel maybe a little more. It would be stronger. It would come through a bit more. I thought this was a really rather well taken image. Certainly a beautifully lit image from Maggie Crawford. Um, and a few of you did the alcohol thing, you know, gin and tonic and all that sort of stuff. You've backlit the glass very nicely, which has brought out the shape of the liquid. If you have a translucent thing like a liquid, bringing the light through it, excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> oh, it's a dry, tickly one right in the back. Bringing the light through it from behind brings it to life. Look at the beautiful edge of the glass, this little bit of rim light. It's going on around the edge of the lemon as well, and it's making the stem of the glass stand out. You can see that the light is coming forward from this little reflection in the bottom. Also, I think Maggie's been really clever here. Um, with these little highlights into the black, look at this little pool of light going on here, and another little pool of light just happening around here. It is a very carefully and very well considered photograph. Nicely done, Maggie. You know, guys, take these on board. If you're thinking, well, why does that work? It's just a glass with a liquid and a, and a, and a, and a bit of fruit on the side. Yes, but the reason it works is because of the light. Photography is all about light and a bit of care and going a bit gently with these things and, you know, kind of thinking through it when it comes to street photography, it's still the same. You know, you may have to move fast sometimes. 
uh, when it comes to landscape can also be the same. You may have a moment when the light breaks through the clouds or something. You've still got to keep a close eye out for it. Carl Spitzer. So Carl, I can see what's going on here. You're working with a very similar thing. You're bringing some, as you said, sunshine colours. And you're out in Cyprus, a lot warmer than it is here, I would hope. Um, and the light coming through the bottle has worked very, very well. But somehow, I'm not sure what's going on here. Is, is your glass just sort of shoved in a hedge or something? Forgive me if I sound like I'm being rude, Carl. <clears throat> I just feel, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a bit too heavy. It's a little bit heavy. Um, I think if the glass was standing more proud, maybe if you had them on a tabletop, so we, we're getting that beautiful shape of the glass. There's a bit of a heaviness about this. So we've got bottle and glass, best friends. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. But good effort. Good effort. And also I like your thinking. You were thinking about the whole backlight thing. Oh, hello, Jane Barnes. Down there in New Zealand. You're always here. Glasses in a hedge. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. But it's a good idea, my friend. It's a good idea. So the dog chasing the sheep or rounding up the sheep. Jane, I know you're probably here. What is it? What is the dog? What is the dog? I wanted to say blue healer, but I don't think it is. I'm not sure. Um, great idea again, best friends. And I like the way you've caught this little moment of the dog looking back and the sheep going off into the distance. Um, there's some nice light going on here as well. If you look at Jane's picture, you see there's a little bit of light a hunt away. I don't know that one, Jay. <clears throat> I'm not an expert with dogs, even though my mum used to breed them. And look at the light, this little bit of catch light on the dog's face. Light is so important. The little bits of light on the back of the sheep. Um, yeah, it's a nice picture. And I also get your concept of best friends going on there. A New Zealand breed, yeah probably is. I mean, you know, you guys from down under, be that in Australian or New Zealand, you um, you have a lot of your own breeds and crazy flora and fauna. Lindsay Marcel. <laughs> it makes you smile, doesn't it? You can't not look at that and smile. Best friends. Um, Lindsay, I just think, I don't know if there was another moment. It's so hard with children, but was there a moment Maybe when the little boy didn't actually face plant the cat and possibly had the head turned to the side or something like that. The other thing, it looks to me like it's not quite sharp. <clears throat> but it is a nice idea. But if you look, there's a lot of distractions in, in the patterns and, and the pillow, I think. Um, nice idea. Totally get it. There's a lot of great ideas going on in here. What we're looking for is the really well executed bit of photography. We just keep moving forward. Now, who have we got here? Cheyenne and Morgan. Jules. Again, you're going with the colour theme. Red and green. Red and green are best friends. Complementary colours. They, they're sort of opposite each other, but nonetheless, they are. <coughs> they are good friends. Shana, you, and you are, Jules, a very accomplished photographer. Some of your work is absolutely spectacular, and I like the way you've done this. I'm always very intrigued by the amount of work that you put into these things, everybody. Um, I mean, what are these, Jules? What are they? I mean, what are these little figurine things? Is it something you've made out of jelly or something like that? I'm just intrigued and wonder about you that you have them in your cupboard waiting there for being used um, but you've done a great job of backlighting them I'm intrigued I guess there's some light coming up from below and behind to put the light into them or have you put I need to ask you a question here Jules seeing as you're there did you put green light through the people and a red light on the background or are these the actual colors of the things and you're using clean white light if you like to light them up uh, it's, it's really quite an intriguing image. Um, 
I'm just keeping an eye on the comments here just to see. Oh, they glow themselves. Right, got it, got it. But look at Jules composition. Look, you've got this texture going on down here. Look at the positioning of these, these little figurines, the gaps either side. It's carefully composed. And then using, um, you know, whatever it is in the background and a shallow depth of field to get those little ringlets, as bokeh as it's called, um, to make them stand out. It's very much an aliens sort of a picture, isn't it? Foil with holes in it with a red light behind it. So Jules has just put into the comments that this is foil in the background with holes in it and a red light behind it to put those little pinpricks of light coming through there. Look at this creative thinking. Photography isn't, of course, just going snap. It's thinking, how can I make that happen? What would happen if I put some foil up and put some holes in it and put a red light behind it? Great thinking, great thinking. Animal Taneha, Taneha, maybe. I kind of like things like this a lot. Um, I do like this because there is obviously a best friend's bond going on here between this guy and his camel. Um, I love the, the best friend's concept here. I just don't know, somehow there's something a little bit awkward about your composition in my opinion. Um, maybe if you could have taken a couple of paces to the right and got these guys just a little bit more head on. I don't know how long you spent with them. I don't know if, if you moved around them, if you, if you took several images. I love the concept. The other thing which to me is just a little uncomfortable is, is your man's hand growing out up here. I'm being harsh, I've got my coach's hat on, I'm, I'm pushing. Because the hand, although we know it belongs to this guy, it doesn't look as though it belongs to this guy. It's almost as though there's a, a, a ghost, a disembodied something reaching up to grab the camel. Keep an eye open for everything that's going on within your image. So how could it be improved? My feeling would be if you were slightly to the right, and this is of course only my opinion, and just maybe shoot a few frames and, and look for the one without the hand just sort of growing out of the camel's head. But I do like your shot, and, I, and I, I, I like the concept. I like this sort of stuff. But hey, that's just me. Martin Lacey. Gnomes. Forgive me, but I always think there's something slightly worrying about people who like gnomes. I think they're creepy. But I like the way you've put this together. You know, again, look at these colours. We've got browns and we've got greens. Very much a woodland sort of a thing. Um, <clears throat> and, and of course your fungus, your mushroom just growing in here. There's some very nice light on these funguses. Um, I'm just wondering if there's something else you could have possibly used with the fungus as best friends. Um, I feel these two are just a little bit far apart. It's almost like you plonked them there. Maybe if you got them a little closer together, because that closeness, best friends are close, aren't they? It, it's bringing that closeness, a bit like the, the, the lovely picture of the, of the couple playing around with the autumn leaves. I just think bringing them closer together will help with the best friends theme. Um, yeah, well exposed, everything's nice and sharp, and I really like the light on your mushrooms. Something which could have helped, I think, is possibly if you brought the camera angle down a little. We're very much looking down here, whereas maybe if we were more on know my level, I think that would have also brought another level of interest to the shot overall. I hope that helps, and I hope you find that a bit useful. Pecan Hayes. What a great name. But also, I, I like your shot. I, I like this, the heart shape the two cats just sort of curled up in there together uh, is as Jules said uh, and Annette what a lovely picture my coaching to you Picom would be give them a little bit more space give them a little bit more space because it's very very tight it's it's like mm. 
I just think you could have easily just backed off a little bit so that you weren't cropping off the cat's ear and not quite cropping them off at the top because you've got that lovely heart shape and, and you've also got some really rather nice light coming in, I'm guessing, from a window which is bringing their sort of fur to life here. Look at the textures in the fur. But it's a nice shot. Um, it's a nice shot. Martin was just saying you didn't want to hide the fungus. Martin, I don't think you would have hid the fungus, my friend. Um, because if we just go back to it again, even if you were down a little bit, you'd still see the fungus. It's just we'd be seeing it from a slightly different angle. Um, and also, it's the theme of the picture, which is best friends rather than fungus, if that makes sense. You'd start with the fungus there. Uh, anyway, I hope that helps. Another sip of water, I think. We've got another nice little moment going on here. Bjorn Lund Jonsson. It is a great little moment. <clears throat> I love it. Guinea pigs are amazing little creatures. We had about five of the things when I was a kid. But again, I would say give it a little bit more space. There's something disconcerting. You see how close you are to cutting your wife's eye here. Um, I just think you just, just come back a bit. It doesn't need to be quite that tight. It makes it just a little bit uncomfortable. It is cute, as Annette has said there. Um, and I love the expression on the guinea pig looking up, this, this eye contact thing. I think maybe if you'd just given them a little bit more room to breathe, it might have just helped a bit. Let's just ease on up. Because, forgive me guys, I don't want to be too late. I do want to go to bed. I actually went off to bed about 2 o'clock. Was it yesterday afternoon? I just thought, oh, I can't cope with this. I slept like a log. I do feel much better today. Christopher Harrison. You've got some lovely light here. And you've got a lovely little intense kind of a moment going on between these two. Um, there is a real feeling of, of connection between them. Um, and I can't fault the, the, you know, the composition and all the rest of it. I like the shallow depth of field to separate them from the background. In this case, I'm going to say, could you have shot from just a couple of inches higher, uh, just so that the little one's face here wasn't, because she's got this amazing expression, and it's just being interrupted here. Now, I know you can't control children. Burst mode is really, really useful in, in these situations because as the little one comes down, you can just be tapping out, you know, <coughs> your camera's banging out what, I don't know, anywhere from eight to 20 frames a second, I suppose. You can just catch the perfect moment when you have something that's not so controllable like this. But I like the backlight going on behind them. The other thing which may have worked would be if you just had a moment when one looked at the other, so it would bring that best friend's connection into the shot a little bit. Um, I hope you don't think I'm being too harsh, but I'd be a rubbish coach if I didn't try and push just a little bit. Nancy Catcher, best friends, oil and bread and olives. Um, yeah, it's 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 a nice it's a nice picture. I, I totally get it's fulfilling the brief. Um, I wonder if you if, if it would have been possible if you could have made slightly moodier lighting, if there was some light coming from behind the oil because it would highlight the oil a little bit better. Um, it might just wake it up a bit. You've got some lovely shapes and light on the olives down here. Um, do you need the tomatoes? I'm not sure you do, to be honest, Nancy, because red is a very, very domineering colour. What do you think, guys? Do you find you're drawn to the red? And I know I'm being Mr. Grumpy, not feeling well, harsh coach tonight. But hey, <clears throat> how do you, what do you think, guys? Do you think it'd be better? I'm just going to finger out the tomatoes a little bit because I think the red is just taking over. I'm just kind of making a little shape with my finger here just to hide the red of the tomatoes. What do you think, guys? Red is such a strong colour, and I think if we kept it between the greens and the bread, 
it might have just helped just that little bit more and it's interesting so we've got a couple of people saying the red is a bit strong sam says it looks fine he likes the red sarah likes the red diane likes the red um maggie likes the red jane doesn't <laughs> causing a split in the audience <coughs> You see what I mean? Everybody is different, but it is a nice shot. I think the main thing could have been if, if there was a bit of light coming from behind. I think that could have certainly helped. Carmen Taylor, this is such a lovely warm moment. And I get the warmth in this, I totally do. And it reminds me of things to do with my own mum. Photographically, I would say your angle of taking the picture could be improved. I know it's a lovely little moment, but you've got a bit of a space at the top, which I'm not entirely sure we need. Let's just do the quick crop, guys. If you cut that space in the top in half, I think that certainly helps. But also I get the feeling this is a, they're sitting in the chair and you're standing over them, um, which is a very normal point of view. Um, Sometimes, um, if you can change the angle from which you're shooting, just even if it's just bending your knees, moving to the left a little, possibly even concentrating in this case more, I'm going to take some of the half the top off and some of the bottom. I find just taking a little bit of the bottom off, just keeping the hands in and taking half the space off the top. Um, but it is a lovely little warm moment, and I like that hug. I really do. Nancy, I get it. You had some with tomatoes and some without, and you had to choose. Exactly, and you chose, and that's completely cool. That is completely cool. Little secret, I know that whenever I post pictures in various places, the ones that I like the best and think are the most interesting are usually the ones that get the least interaction or likes. And very often there's pictures I think, mm, I'll put it on there. <clears throat> And everybody loves it. There is no rhyme nor reason. Now here's one which I really do like. David to Genova. This one I really have been drawn to. Um, I, 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 I really am because just the empty swings, swinging. It to me still says best friends, even though there's no one in the picture. I think that's actually quite clever. Um, I really do think that's quite clever. And also, look how carefully David has taken this shot. Look at these uprights. They are all absolutely spot on. They are all perfectly straight. It's not at a wonky angle or anything like that. Um, yeah, the empty, the empty seat swinging together. It's the together part, which I think brings out the best friends bit after the first attempt devolved into an absolute row. Okay, so you were trying to do this with the family and they were just not playing ball. But you pulled a rabbit out of the hat with this one and in many ways I think possibly works fine without them. Tell your family, tell them that if they're gonna have arguments, they're redundant, mate. But it's a really lovely shot, David. And for me, that's why it works. I don't know, you may have your own opinion. We all have our own opinion. That's just life, isn't it? Sam, hello, Sam. Now you've caught a lovely best friend's moment here. You really have. You know, you've, you've, you've really caught the decisive moment. Um, and it's not an easy thing to do because you often need to move fast. I don't know whether it's a phone shot or what. I, I can see your light's not perfect for you and there's a lot of distractions there. And I've got my coach head on tonight, as I said. Just think, possibly round to the side, just a little bit, a little tiny bit lower. That could have helped. It's, it's somehow that we, we've got no, we're not getting this guy. You don't have to get all of him, but I think just a little bit. I'm being harsh. I've got my coach hat on. It is still a great little moment of best friends. Um, and you've certainly caught a moment of happiness, a little piece of magic there. Elve. Hervé Guibault-Gallet. I couldn't believe it when you came walking round the corner 
at that little old Casbar in Morocco, my friend. It's like, uh, yeah, it's quite amazing, you guys. Uh, yeah, I had no, I never thought I'd bump in, into you there, Hervé. Um, we met when you came on the photo walk, cameras don't hit pictures in London. Um, but I didn't expect you to be wandering around in Morocco, in the, exactly the same place we were at exactly the same time. The world is indeed full of miracles and magic. Funnily enough, it happened just as I arrived on Lanzarote for that workshop. The day before the workshop, I was visiting a little restaurant that we go to because they let us set up with our laptops and do post-production and feedback sessions. And uh, I saw Maribel, who owns the restaurant, and she came out and goes, oh, hi, and we give each other a hug. And there is Stefan, who's been on a couple of other workshops with me, including Lanzarote. He was there on holiday with his wife. I had no idea. And he was in the restaurant and came out. So there was two bits of amazing synchronicity on those workshops. Hervé, I really like your idea. Light and shade, they're best friends. And I think you've got a great shot here. I, I, I'm guessing this is something you probably shot in Morocco. Um, what I really like is how you've got the guy's head. Look at the light on the hat, and although everything's all kind of in silhouette, the fact that we've got this bit of brightness going on behind, it's really drawing you to the guy's face and his head. And I like all the pots and, and, and everything going on, on around there. There's, there's some really lovely light there. Look at the shape and the textures. Light is king. Look at these pots. See the, the bright and the dark. It's, it's bringing it all together, and I love the angle that Hervé has shot this from, looking along the pots. Um, it's a great shot, it is, and I like your idea about light and shade. What a coincidence indeed, so Owen. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. Let me just move on up just a little bit further. This made me laugh a lot, Philip Gray. Um, and it's absolutely on point as well. On <laughs> point, yeah, sorry. Um, but it is. It is totally on point, you know. Uh, I'm guessing it's a gay bar. I don't know. But either way, you've got a big old bear hut going on here. Um, and I just think it's amusing. And I like the colours and the steps. It's, uh, yeah, great little moment caught there, Philip. Let's just ease on up a little bit further. Now this one, ah, Amanda Newell. Hello, Amanda. <coughs> That's a really nice little bit of intentional camera movement going on here. It's very, very arty, sort of painterlistic. Um, and I also totally get it. I, I, I don't know if that rings true for everyone, but living down here and kind of knowing the coast, you know, you're always seeing friends with their surfboards and their sailboards and they're, they're coming out of the water at the end of the day at the sunset and they're all laughing and joking. I really like the way you've composed that as well, Amanda. You know, we've got the surfers down the bottom, we've got the band of colour going on there. And I know it's really bright at the top and maybe some of the camera club judges go, oh no, you burnt out the sky, it's too bright. Well, you know, I think it works. Um, I, I, I think it's a really, really lovely picture and I, I totally get the best friends thing, going surfing with your best friends. What do we got here? Chris Kemp Renninger. Sandwiches, what do we got? Sandwiches and milk. Peanut butter and jam and a cold glass of milk. Got it. Chris, I get it, I get it, I get it. But I didn't know it was peanut butter and jam. To me, it looked a bit like possibly, I don't know what it looks like. I'm not going to go there. But it uh, reminds me of a practical joke my mother once played on me, but I'm not going to go there. It's a nice idea. I get your idea, peanut butter and jam and a glass of milk. And I would agree with you, I haven't had that in years, but it is certainly a very tasty little friends made in heaven thing. Um, I think your light is really quite flat. Again, it might have helped if there was a bit of light possibly highlighting the filling and then we'd have known more possibly about it, turn the sandwich a bit, if you could have got a bit of light just hitting the filling. I know I'm being harsh again. Um, but I like the way you've composed it. 
I kind of like the fact that, you know, we don't need to see the whole sandwich. And in this case, it kind of works to just sort of crop that edge off a bit. Paul Lynn. Yeah, we've got a little happy moment here too, haven't we? You know? Um, best friends. Totally get it. Quiet, loving moment between two old friends. <coughs> the thing that I find distracting, Paul, is the 18. It's just that 18 is a bit distracting for me. Let's just see what happens. We just ease that 18 off. You see, I think it helps. I find the 18 sort of, I'm, I'm fighting between the lady and her expression with the dog and the 18. Um, it's just me. What do you think, guys? Just, you know, try it yourselves. Just, just take off the 18 and just see. Do you think it helps or do you think it hinders? What do you think? Pop something into the chat. Let's see. So we've got a few couple of people starting to agree. Crop the 18 without, yeah, better without. <laughs> Didn't even notice the 18, that was Amanda. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I just noticed the cup thing that somebody just mentioned. Yeah, just cropping it with that. It is so difficult, isn't it? If you're sitting there with someone and there's a little moment going on, uh, I'm guessing you're in a restaurant or a cafe or something here, Paul, you know, it could be worth just sliding those things out of the way whilst you're watching the interaction between um, this lady and her best friend there. Um, there's always so much to look at with photography, isn't there? Everyone thinks it's about cameras and settings and techniques and there's a handful of those that you need most of it is about how you work the environment. There's five controls on a camera you need. There are more which are useful, but there's five that you need. Um, and the rest is all light and composition and controlling the environment. And if you want to get confident with your camera, then come and do my online masterclass in photography. It's called Masterclass, not because you have to be a master to do it. It's because it will help you master all the things that you need. Then you can take those tools and you can move them around and work with them and then start to adapt them for whatever situation that you're in. There is a link in the description. If you've already done Masterclass and you're struggling, it's because you're not doing the exercises. You've heard me say this many times before, I'm sure. The exercises are there to give you experience. Just keep doing them, keep doing them, keep doing them over and over and over until you're doing it automatically without having to think about it. Moving on. Just going to ease up. It's quarter two. Where is it? There's a couple I wanted. Oh, here we go. There's a couple here. Julianne Wilson. What a lovely little moment. What a lovely little moment. <clears throat> and it is a lovely little moment. And I like the simplicity of your colours and your exposure spot on and it's nice and sharp and everything. The only thing I am slightly thinking that could help you with this picture is a decisive moment. It's just we got the half blink on this little fella here. Um, the body language is beautiful and I like the way one's coming down from the top and one's coming up from the bottom. This is where I feel burst mode can be really useful. Unless, you know, you're there and you can just hold the shot and watch and watch and watch. I just feel if, if it's, it's the eye that's missing for me, that's all. But it is a lovely, soft, gentle little moment between these two little baby creatures. And they are kind of cute, aren't they, alpacas? There's quite a few of those living in the fields around where I am. Beverly Divine. Hello, Beverly. Now, Beverly, I think you kind of had a really great little moment here. But I'm sorry, it was spoilt by a miscellaneous leg. Um, the thing that I get is the leg. Um, it's, hello Beverly, forgive me. <clears throat> because I love this little moment of, of holding the dog's ear and the dog's expression and, and the feet and everything. But then we've got this leg which somehow doesn't belong in the shot. Um, I don't know whose leg it is, but 
I don't know, I'd have been tempted to say, Oi, get your leg out! <laughs> Forgive me, but I would. Because, you know, look at the dog's language. Look at the way the dog's sitting. Look at, look at this paw over the foot. And then we've got this leg, which is just kind of spoiling things, which is a shame because it's a, it's a really lovely little moment between a couple of best friends going on here. Um, I hope that helps, and I hope I haven't caused offence. There's a pretty one, Alison Clayton. You know, it's a beautifully taken photograph. And also, you know, this, this is really saying best friends to me as well, because look, you know, we've got the mugs. Two, two friends are having coffee and cake. Um, yeah, we got the hands in the background. I think they kind of help with it. We got, a, I like the colours that are working on the table along with the napkin, the, the blue. We got the, the browns of the coffee and the biscuit. Um, and you've got some really quite nice light. It's, it's just directional window light. There's a few little shadows and shapes bringing the cup to life. Um, yeah, it's a nicely, nicely done little picture. How could it be improved? I'm not sure it could. But I just wanted to bring attention to it. I like the way you've shot it with a wide angle lens, possibly with a phone, doesn't matter. But the camera is really close to that cup and that's bringing a feeling of intimacy into the picture. Um, when you use a wide angle lens and get close, you always get this intimate feeling because you are physically close to the subject. And it just kind of works. Whoop, a little jump up to the top. That made me laugh. <laughs> James Cavaretto. <clears throat> best friends, excuse me, best friends in low places. But it did make me laugh. They are best friends and uh, you made me smile. Hopefully some others too. Alison Bell. I had to look at this quite hard before I figured out what it was because your exposure is spot on. Your colours are beautiful. The way you've caught those droplets of water is kind of magical. You've got beautiful light coming across the water here. What I was completely missing is the duck. I was thinking, so what is that? There's something diving into the water. And I just think, could it have been just a fraction earlier? Because, you know, that saying, like a duck to water, just immediately springs to mind. And you've got such beautiful light and such beautiful colours and that lovely calm water. Um, and this, I, I mean, I love the way the water is moving. You've got lovely fast shutter speed in order to freeze those water droplets. Um, I just think possibly a moment earlier. So there was a little bit more duck action. Alison Clayton, you've got to mention. <laughs> Please don't think I discriminate in my mentions, people. Um, it really is just based on which picture jumps out. And, and I just try to randomly choose the ones that I think a bit of feedback will help the most people in the group. Speaking of feedback, um, I think it's on Tuesday next week. Our new um, feedback group is going live. It's going to be our first meeting. If you're someone who's taking this photography seriously and you want feedback, then use the link in the description below. Go and have a look. So I've got an all new feedback group. It's a small group of photographers. We will meet twice a month. It is done on a subscription basis, but we will meet twice a month and I will give you feedback and answer questions on any image apart from current photo creative challenges because I, I, I just, I'm just not going to do that, I'm not going to go there. But on any other thing, yes, and I can set some additional little challenges too. But the real value, I think, is having a small group where you are guaranteed to get questions, answers, a bit of mentoring and a bit of feedback. Uh, we've got a fair few people signed up. There's only going to be a small number of photographers at any one time. There's still a few places left. Use the link in the description below if you want to come and do that. If you're taking your photography seriously, then that one is for you. Go and have a look. Get yourself signed up. The first one is going to be um, next week. I'm not sure how we're doing this. Emmeline is dealing with it. I've been out of the country. I'm just doing what I'm told. But you will get value from it, I promise you. So Alison Bell. It's a nice picture. I just would like to see a little bit more duck action going on there. Um, 
I thought this was really good. Carol Crom. I totally get it. And remember what I was saying earlier about the closeness. When you get closeness between two things, these two are close and, and there is a relationship established between the two, I think. Um, I like the use of black and white, totally works for the subject. I like the positioning, I like the composition. You know, the light just coming through the trees, uh, and these, these gentle sort of shadows. Um, it just puts me in mind of an elderly couple, you know? You know the ones that you see them holding hands after, I don't know, 70 years together and all the rest of it, which is kind of cute and pretty amazing. I think it's a really nice image and, and I totally think it works with that best friend thing. Nicely done, Carol. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing, but seeing as we're here. Nino. My friend, I get that they're best friends, but I don't think it's terribly powerful as an image. It looks to me like they've been whomped with a flash um, from in front, which is never particularly great. And there's a little bit of softness. I feel a little more care with the composition may have helped, Nino. Possibly, again, if you come around to the right, because you've got that arch of the doorway, could you have used that sort of more centrally to frame these guys? Um, the other thing, of course, is the flash. It's given you some light, but it's a very hard frontal sort of a light, um, which, which isn't really helping. This guy looks totally startled. Um, you may have had to use flash, you know, sometimes there's no alternative wherever possible. If you can bounce a flash off something, use a reflector. If you've, if you've got a flash, which, which can be pivoted, you know, uh, so you can bounce it or, or feather it off to an angle, the light would be a bit nicer, but I get it. You've got some best friends. There's no question there. I hope that was useful. So let's just what else could we got oh how can i not mention a motorbike picture because i think it's a really great picture darren um <laughs> susie said mike will love this <laughs> i do i think it's a i think it's a really nice picture now i possibly get it because i'm a motorcyclist all that water and all that cold and yet you're still having a good time i think one of the things i like with this is the way you've allowed it to be dark and gloomy and damp you haven't tried to change that hey Darren which a lot of people would probably do you know it's like oh it looks gloomy I need to brighten it up a bit well no it, it is gloomy um, and it is cold and I also do get that best friends thing because just riding around on a motorcycle is just one of the best things in life Glenn Haskins <laughs> you need to get one you can't you know you just need to get one and then you'll understand Anyway, enough motorcycle talk. Bear with me a moment while I move my screen around so we can have a look at the next stage of the proceedings. Here we go. So, as I mentioned just before I go into this, if you are really serious and you would like some feedback and mentoring personally in a small group, then use the link below, come and sign up. We'll be starting this next week and it will be twice a month in a small group of people. You're guaranteed to get some feedback and some mentoring and to get your questions answered. It is a two-way conversation, not a monologue like it is here on YouTube. So, the pictures which I chose as my kind of favourites from the Best Friends Challenge. I'm going to start here because I'm old and blind. I need to just move some stuff so I can see what's going on. I'll oh, stop jumping around, computer. That's better. So my first one that I chose was from Susie Natman. Um, I just thought this was a really simple, really clever really well executed little representation of some best friends. I just think it's cute and I think it's kind of funny. Um, and it's so simple. Look at the light on the background. We've got that lovely sort of brighter area. We've got the, the different shapes. We've got the fingers coming over the wall or whatever it is. Um, I just think it's fun. 
and there's some some nice light it's a little bit bright down the bottom right corner but hey it is still some really nice light and the shadows and i just think it's a great little bit of creative thinking what more can i say the only thing which i do find slightly odd is why the person on the right or, or, or to the main person's left has got their hands off to one side like that <laughs> i don't know why but it's just kind of quirky and it works uh it's a really great little moment susie the other one which i next one which i absolutely was drawn to because i just think it's a great moment in some great light is from our friend jane kilbride what a great moment you know best friends out walking the dog at night but look how uh, Jane's used that pool of light on the wall so I'm guessing I haven't read I noticed the street light and waited for someone to pass by there you go it's a stakeout it's as in you know waiting <clears throat> you see the light and then you wait for a moment somebody may have come past walking the dog they may not have done either way I, I, I'm guessing Jane saw the light and thought, I'm going to wait for something to happen. And, and possibly, as chance would have it, it was someone walking the dog. You've got best friends. Could have been two people. Could have been a couple come along and started kissing or something like that. Either way, great picture. Great picture, Jane. Now, we saw this theme a little bit, but I just was really drawn to this one by our friend Ahmed Barbers because I love the composition. It's just different. And the light is really great. Milk and cookies, yes, they are best friends. They, they just work well together. But the photography, I really, really like the way you've done this, Ahmed. The, the, the glass of milk, the way you've composed it, the way you've just cut it on the side, it, it's kind of noteworthy, it, it makes you look at it because it's different it's not like glass cookies it's 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 kind of clean and it's kind of simple i like the way that we've got a slightly darker background behind the milk and a slightly brighter background behind the darkness of the biscuits um, and those few crumbs they just kind of all come together to just sort of make it work um yeah irene carson i agreed irene it's 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 simple and it's eye-catching it's eye-catching because it is so simple um, yeah great shot and so our next one that absolutely drew me because I think this has got so much energy in it is from I think a completely new person we've never met before called Emily Jones Emily, I just really like this moment that you've caught here. It is so obviously best friends. Look at the body language. Look, there's a buzz of excitement going on. But beyond the buzz of the excitement, you have told us where it is. You've told us what the weather's doing. You've, you've created a great moment with that reflection by kind of getting your camera in the right place at the right height. And you've caught it all in one go um i think it's a great hello emily glad to see you're here um yeah i just think it's a it's 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 a great moment really really well captured and the way you've used every single ingredient that you had to hand you know you're square on in front of the blackpool sign but you've also used the main ingredient which of course is the reflection and the light to just capture that moment between two best friends just coming together there's a lot of joy and fun in that image which i think is really great i think there's a lot of love in this one from dina peters um it's just another little <laughs> little quiet moment and there's something about that powerful masculine hand around that little dog somehow um which I really like. I like the way you've used black and white. There are three sort of layers in this. There's sort of three elements, which I think work really nicely. Um, I like the hand, the dog, and the man. 
it's like one, two, three. Three is a powerful number, and it often works very, very well within an image, within a picture. Um, I just realized we've got an interrupting background. That's better. It works really, really, really well. I like the little dog's expression. That looks like a little dog that's feeling loved. Um, what more can I say? The light is really nice. There's just enough sort of highlight and shade and the use of black and white, I think, was really, really worth using, bringing up. So then the one, the image of the month, the one which I just kept coming back to because I just thought it was a, a cracking picture. And I just think it's, it's, it's a real moment and it's not an easy easy thing to do and it's i think it's another relatively new person forgive me but from tony slater i just really love this i like the softness the 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 fact that it's twilight you know you you you've allowed it to be dark and kind of soft in contrast because it's a soft moment between these two otters wildlife is such a hard thing to photograph to capture um, and I think you've got a really really great little best friends moment there I mean it puts me in mind of was it called Tarka the Otter Ring of Bright Water or something like that it was a book and, and one was the other I, I can't remember but uh, <laughs> Tony Slater to say oh my <laughs> but I do think it's a really really beautiful picture I like the I like the gentle soft flat light, and I like the way you've allowed you know it to remain soft and flat. It's a very twilight evening, otters in the twilight sort of a shot. But it, it, I I would love to know, Tony, were you there for ages? Do you know where the otters live? Are you really into the wildlife stuff? Because wildlife photog photographers are some of the most patient people on planet Earth. First entry, whoa, rock and roll, Tony. You've set your bar high now, haven't you? Um, welcome. Welcome to the group. Welcome. Thank you for coming. I just, I kept coming back to it. But were you there for ages, Tony? Please tell us. Were you there for ages? Were you like waiting for this moment? Is it? I'd love to know just a little bit because people see these moments and, and just think, oh, it was a quick snap. But very often there's a lot of work and research goes into it. You love wildlife and you were there for a while, yes. I don't doubt that. The first person I ever did a one-on-one -on -one personal training day with, uh, a chap called Julian, he really wanted to photograph uh, wildlife and he found a place up on the New Forest where, where we live where the hares were going out in the evening light and, you know, the hares, they stand on their hind legs and they sort of do this thing and, and they box. And he really wanted to capture this picture and it took him so long i think for a couple of years he was going out where the hares go and he was slowly creeping in slowly creeping in, getting them used to his presence almost every day after work he'd go up there and sneak in and sneak in and then one day he he just got the moment there was all the little dust motes and things floating in the air and the backlight of the evening sunset and these two hairs just it was absolute bbc wildlife perfection fantastic so much patience well done tony well done everybody um huge shout out to everybody who enters these challenges because you're taking yourselves on you are putting in the work because you're committed to being a better photographer and you know that's what we all want to do isn't it to sort of to be full proud just to look at our images and think yeah i did that anyway i am going to go and not do much and then go to bed early i think so thank you for putting up with me apologies if i seem a little bit what's it don't forget if you want to join our feedback group the new feedback group use the link in description pop over there if you haven't done it already then please hit that like button because it really really helps smash that like button if you haven't done it already thank you all for your kind words and your hope you feel better i really appreciate that uh, the next challenge will go live on the website in a few minutes once i come out of here and put that up live be well take care and 
if you haven't been joining in the challenges, go and do it. I saw a couple of people say in the group their mojo wasn't there this time. The way you get your mojo there is to just start doing it. Just start doing it. And then you'll find your mojo will come back. Take care, be well, and I see you next time.